10 common piercing myths coming up next on Body Piercing Basics, episode number 82. So you should probably stick around. Let's get up. For those that are new to the channel, my name is Davo. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I own and operate the Axiom Body Piercing Studio located here in Des Moines, Iowa, inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo. So when I talk to you about these things, I've taught you a level of expertise as somebody that's been in the body piercing industry for well over 26 years. So what are we gonna talk about today? We're gonna talk about some of the more common myths or misconceptions about body piercing. A lot of people think these things, and they come up commonly uh, in comments, uh, emails, messages, questions from my clients, etc. Because they've heard this or they've read this and they believe that it's true. So we're gonna go through 10 of the more common ones that I've come across. Um, one thing I'm going to say is if you disagree with this or you have some factual proof that one of these myths is actually true, please make a comment. I'd happy to happily look over your source and determine that it isn't a myth, but let's get into the myths. Let's break some myths. Let's bust some myths. Let's get rid of them. The first one being number one, ear piercings never close. This is a misconception that has been going around since the beginning of time. If you talk to people that have had their ear pierced, they're like, well, I had it pierced when I was a kid. You know, I leave stuff out of it for two or three years and there's no, you know, I just, the jewelry just goes right back in. It never closes. Yes, it does. Uh, something most people don't understand with any piercing is that the minute you remove the jewelry, your body's going to work pretty hard at trying to squeeze that tissue back together in the center and start reconnecting it and then filling in the hole. Um, even though it may appear on the outside to be open, uh, when you put the jewelry through, in most cases, especially with ear piercing studs, you're doing it with such a small, thin piece of jewelry that you're actually repuncturing that piercing uh, in the center and re-piercing it every time you do it. The only way to ensure that piercings can stay open and will stay open for a long period of time is wearing jewelry in them. That's the only 100% guarantee that you are not going to lose a piercing. That said, there are a few exceptions, some male genital, some female genital that will not close. Ear piercings, if you stretch them beyond, or any piercing, if they're stretched beyond a length where your body can't constrict the tissue, they will probably not close. For example, if you have overly large stretched ear piercings, then yeah, it's not gonna completely close. But that's the exception. What most people think about is just regular 20 gauge average piercings. Each time you do that, the reason why it's sore, the reason why it bleeds, the reason why it's agitated is because you're re-piercing it when you put the jewelry back in. Number two, if you pierce the tongue in the wrong spot, you will cause paralysis and never be able to use your tongue again. I'm not sure where this one comes from. If it's just misinformation that started early on in the whole piercing thing. Yes, there are a lot of nerve groupings in your tongue. Yes, um, in theory, you could probably do a little bit of damage, but not enough that would cause paralysis. That would be next to impossible. Uh, when we're talking about the position of the tongue piercing and where we want to avoid is where that tendon, the fluorineum tendon on the underside of your tongue connects to that tissue. We generally want to be in front of it, not because it's going to cause paralysis, but because it's going to cause discomfort and a lot of problems and possibly eliminate or limit your movement of your tongue. So no, it's never gonna cause paralysis. There is not a magic spot on your tongue where if pierced, you will suddenly not be able to speak. Number three, and this is another oral piercing myth. I don't know what it is about tongue piercings, but they tend to kind of seem to have collected a lot of these over the years. Uh, this one is that you cannot eat dairy while healing a tongue piercing or that dairy is gonna lead to a yeast infection. No, it is not. Um, basically, 
what they're talking about or what they're worried about, this yeast infection stuff, is actually a, th uh, a thrush. And thrush is caused by a breakdown of the natural enzymes of bacteria in your mouth, and you get an outbreak of a thr of a uh, fungi called thrush, which is inside you to begin with. Um, it's part of your normal, healthy digestive tract. But when it becomes imbalanced, it will overgrow. Dairy will not increase the likelihood of this. Um, there is no factual proof that dairy causes any issues while healing anything. Uh, I think a lot of this comes down to this idea that somehow there's some kind of fermentation in there. The reality is, is there's not going to be a lot of uh, microorganisms inside of uh, uh, milk, for example, that's going to cause those problems. Um, a lot of people say it's a yeast in like things like yogurt, which I generally suggest you eat yogurt. Not only is it going to uh, keep your GI tract healthy, keep up your probiotics and, and all that good stuff, but it's also going to help eliminate the likelihood of thrush by helping to keep things in balance. Misconception about fermentation is that it just continues after the fact. Like once we you get cheese and it's still fermenting or you get beer or wine and it's continuing to ferment. The reality is, is in most of those cases, including yogurt, they stop the fermentation before it is a food product. Otherwise it would go bad. It would not taste good. You would have additional flavors in there that you do not want in it. One of the most common things with beers is trying to eliminate the contact of the yeast with uh, after they have ate all the sugar and made that alcohol we want, uh, uh, getting them off of the, the beer so or wine in that case, or cheese, so that it doesn't affect the flavor. So the stuff you're ingesting, like yogurt, um, even alcoholic beverages, etc., it doesn't have live yeast in it. Uh, there's some weird cases where people will do that, but in most cases, no. In fact, that the yeast population is dormant. So you can't get a yeast infection, which is another entirely different thing and uh, is a misuse of that term. I know I over-explained that. Number four, you can't breastfeed if you have your nipples pierced. Yes, you can. There's absolutely no way that it's going to affect it. Um, in a negative way, you might see more flow, so to speak, through the piercing area. And I would generally suggest removing the jewelry before you do any type of breastfeeding. Having a small metal object in your, uh, in your newborn's mouth, uh, not a good idea, especially since most jewelry has loose pieces. So this is a bad situation. But otherwise, it will not affect the production of milk. It will not affect the delivery of the milk. And now you know. Number five. This is the one that was going around for a while about 10 or 15 years ago. Nipple piercings cause breast cancer. There is no clinical proof of all the studies that have been done that prove that nipple piercings cause breast cancer. There is no connection whatsoever. It's perfectly safe. It's not going to give you breast cancer. Number six. This is one of my favorites because uh, I had a counselor actually try to tell me this. Um, sexual piercings are a sign of sexual abuse. Meaning, if you have genital piercings or your nipples pierced, you must have been abused sexually at some point in your life. This was a study done by somebody that really didn't use a control group. They basically went through and they noticed that a lot of people getting pierced also were sexually abused. The test group they used was sexually abused people. So of course, they would all have been sexually abused. There is no connection between the two of them. Yes, there are some people that have done these piercings. I've had clients that have done these piercings that after uh, being sexually assaulted have done this as a way to kind of reclaim that part of their body, but there is no direct mental connection or what have you or sign that the person who has these type of piercings has been sexually abused. Number seven, if you have allergic reactions to cheap jewelry you buy at the mall, you have a nickel allergy. This is not true. What you're generally reacting to is often very cheap jewelry made of substandard materials that is not a pure alloy or is plated. 
uh, more commonly plated. Once your body wears off the plating, the undercoating is something that everybody's allergic to, like copper or some other cheaper material, and you have reactions to it, and you have reactions to the fungi uh, that can collect on it and the tarnish and everything else. So no, just because you're allergic to crappy jewelry does not mean that you're allergic to nickel. Now, if you are allergic to nickel, which is one of the most common metal allergies on the planet, you're also gonna have reactions to other forms of, uh, or things that have nickel in it, like necklaces, watches, uh, belt buckles, the rivets on the back of blue jeans, uh, the top button. If you've had reactions to that, like rash and et cetera, then yeah, chances are you're allergic to nickel. If you bought uh, five pairs of uh, post jewelry at the mall for $2 and you uh, broke out and had weirdness going on because you wore them in your ears, chances are you may not be allergic to nickel. Number eight, plastics cannot harm or do damage to teeth, gums, or the bone structure in your mouth. Acrylics, plastics, biohazard, or biohazard, sorry, bioplastics and et cetera, no matter what name brand they use on it, is hard, dense plastic. Constant rubbing or agitation against that is gonna be just as bad as it's going to be with uh, if you had metal in there. The only saving grace to this is possibly it would give before your teeth do, but since it's hard dental acrylic, it can do some damage even if you do bite down on it and it breaks. Uh, there is a whole list of issues with plastics. Um, I constantly see people going, oh, if you don't want to get gum erosion on your uh, Libre piercing or your Moreau or whatever, um, or your Medusa, get you know put bioplastic in there and everything's going to be super fine. No, it will cause just as much damage. Nothing replaces having the properly sized jewelry um, placed properly and having that positioned in a way that's gonna do the least amount of damage. And if you start seeing problems, take the jewelry out because it's not going to go away. It is only going to worsen. It's just part of the risk of having a piece of jewelry in your mouth. Number nine, piercing kids ears at a young age is better because they won't remember the pain. I've done a video a long time ago on why I don't like to pierce infants or toddlers and generally will refuse to do it. Um, one of the things is, is that because of that age, everything is amplified, including their imagination and their fear of the unknown. Getting them pierced at a young age may not be a memorable moment to them, but it is, it can implant a level of trauma that's going to cause them to be scared of the idea of piercing for the rest of their lives. The outcome is often not the best. Usually the piercings will move or migrate as the person gets older, um, basically dropping downward or outward as that lobe develops. It's best just to wait until they're older. Plus, let them make that decision when they actually have the capability of doing so. But yeah, now kids, uh, piercing young kids and eliminating trauma and all that other stuff, that's all just the hogwash. Um, it's not going to make a difference. It's not going to hurt less. They're probably going to have a much more traumatic experience at a young age than they would as they get older. Number 10, piercings are a temporary thing. This is an ongoing thing. I'd always say, um, I'd always have parents come in and their, their, their child wants to get a bunch of facial piercings and their whole excuse on it is, well, when they get tired of it, they can just take it out and go back to normal. Every time you pierce yourself, regardless of where it's at on your body, you are permanently changing your body. The scar tissue does not magically go away. In fact, it will take years and years and years to fade, um, especially if you leave the jewelry in for an extended period of time. So yes, they are temporary, but no, the, the, the effects of the piercing is not temporary. You are changing things forever. Well, uh, that's 10 of them. I hope I didn't babble on too much. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I hope it cleared up some uh, some misinformation that you may have heard in the past. If you enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up, especially if you learned something. If you haven't already, please subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you're notified every single time we post something. If you uh, like, like 
swag. You like t-shirts, you like uh, phone cases, all kinds of fun stuff, throw pillows, stickers, etc. Check out our merch store. 12, uh, roughly a dozen or so designs there. Um, very similar colors, etc. Check that out. Link is in the description. Till next time, here's hoping all your piercing skill will ease and we'll add a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, hope to see if your body piercing needs in the future. Have a good day, everybody. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay with us.